Let's move on now. Angolan president has uh, met with the French president Emmanuel Macron at the Elysee Palace in Paris today. Uh, the French foreign minister Jean Nives Le Drian announced this earlier. Earlier this year, the desire of France to be involved in Angola's economic diversification program, he earlier stated that French businesses had expressed interest in investing in the southern African nation. President Macron is expected to reciprocate Mr. Lorenko's gesture by making an official visit to Angola next year. The United States has released an additional list of six South Sudanese officials it accuses of being complicit in the country's civil war. The U.S. says the six of them include the defense and information ministers, a former military chief and a state governor who obstructed peace efforts and hampered aid distribution. A draft resolution being placed before the U.N. Security Council aims to extend sanctions on South Sudan for a further year. The Security Council is expected to vote on the proposal on Thursday. Day. However, South Sudan's foreign affairs spokesman Mawien Makol said blacklisting individuals and imposing sanctions was not the solution to the ongoing civil war in the country. May 27th every year is marked as the United Nations uh, Children's Day around the world. This year, the UN Children's Educative Fund went with the theme Creating Safe Spaces for Children. Our collective responsibility. UNICEF pledges its commitment to end violence against children in Nigeria and elsewhere. On the other hand, President Mohamedou Bukhari, President of Nigeria, has also called on security agencies to redouble efforts in protecting children from danger and violence in line with the provisions of the 1999 Constitution. The calls have become necessary at a time when insurgency, especially in northeast Nigeria, has deterred children from attending the school, although uh, some state governments are trying to reverse this. And today we focus on Leah Sharibu, a victim of violence in northeast Nigeria and one of the 110 students kidnapped by Boko Haram insurgents in February. While her friends kidnapped have uh, regained their freedom, Leah remains in captivity. Activity. The government says it's doing all it can to ensure she returns safely to her parents and loved ones. So as we mark another Children's Day this year uh, and this week, uh, we train our thoughts towards Libya, Leah, her plight and that of other children still in Boko Haram captivity, including the girls kidnapped from Chibok in Borno State in 2014, uh, some of whom are still in Boko Haram captivity. Right, uh, let's get more on this. I'm being joined by child rights activist Taiwa Kilami uh, for our discussion. Uh, thank you, Taiwa, for joining us on the program today. Every year we celebrate children, and in the last few years we have seen an increase in the number of children kidnapped by insurgent groups, especially in northeast Nigeria. Should we be celebrating, or should our focus be more on their protection and safety? Okay, I think uh, we can't quite connect with uh, Taiwo there. Let's uh, take you to uh, some other stories now. We uh, go to Senegal at the moment, where thousands of students have been marching in several cities across the country in protest against late grant payments and mismanagement at public universities. That's an allegation by them. Now, this latest protest comes almost 10 days after a student was killed in the northern city of St. Louis during clashes with authorities. In Dakar, the Senegalese capital, protesters hold up signs and shout, we want justice. Many of them are students of Che Kanta Diop University and St. Louis Gastonberger University. Angered by the death of Fowl Lassin, a student of St. Louis Gastonberger University who died of gunshot wounds. They are also asking for the resignation of the ministers of higher education, of finance and of the interior. 
Mary Teo Niani and Amadou Ba are at the center of all the woes affecting Sheikh Antetiop University. The delay in paying the grants, never-ending reforms we don't even understand. Back in 2014, when it was Basiru Faye that was killed, they were involved, and up to today, they are still part of the government. With Fal Husseini's death, it is again the same. We are asking for them to leave. Previous protests that led to the death of Fal Hussein had turned violent in both universities. When police entered the students' compound and threw tear gas canisters and shot rubber bullets at stone throwing students. The students are also angry about their living conditions. They say many of them sleep in overcrowded rooms and cannot afford to eat. In Dakar, students' bursaries are between 18,000 and 36,000 ciphers a month. Today, a room made to house two students can house up to six people, a room which is not even 18 square meters wide. We are overcrowded here. Along with our luggages, we are overcrowded. There are not good conditions. Sometimes there is no water, there are power cuts. Even if more rooms are being built, there are way too many students at the university. Even in the areas where we're supposed to learn and study, there are too many people. And sometimes we can't properly follow a lesson, even if we have excellent teachers. In the meantime, Senegal's president, Macky Sall, has sacked the head of St. Louis University and entered negotiations with the student bodies on ways of paying the late bursaries. Still to come on the program. A Malian undocumented migrant in France is honored by France's president for a heroic act. That's in a moment. Do stay with us.